Uh, now back to some news that is happening in Washington. John Corzine is going to be testifying on Capitol Hill this morning about MF Global's collapse. Well, joining me now are two men with a lot of experience when it comes to holding hearings in Washington. We've got former Congressman Martin Frost, a Democrat of Texas, and also Tom Davis, Republican from Virginia. And uh, Congressman Davis, you're the former chairman of the Government Reform Committee. So you have conducted a lot of these investigative hearings like we're about to watch and see uh, with John Corzine. Bottom line, what do the lawmakers need to get out of this hearing today? Well, look, let's talk the politics first. Here you have not only a former Democratic senator and Democratic governor, but an Obama bundler. Mm. Uh, at a minimum, you try to make any money he's raised radioactive, have them give it back, call attention to corruption. It fits into the narrative going into this next uh, election. I think, secondly, they want to understand exactly what went wrong, who made the decisions, who's getting hurt. Uh, just get to the bottom of how corporate America and all these different swaps work and why they get wrong, get a better understanding of that. Well, but that's really secondary. This is this is high-level politics. Uh, high-level politics. I mean, who's it going to play more, though, too? Is it the Republicans or is it the Democrats? Oh, no. Uh, this is, uh, the, for the Republicans, this is a buffet. You uh, <laughs> This guy was a Democratic Senate leader, a uh, campaign leader, Democratic governor, and an Obama bundler. And just, just remember that this is what happens when... Uh, control shifts in the House of Representatives. Uh, the majority party is the one that gets to decide what hearings to hold, who to bring before them. So it was a big deal when the Republicans took control of the House of Representatives in the middle of a Democratic presidential administration. Tom chaired the Government Reform Committee. This hearing is before a different committee, the Ag Committee, but the principles are still the same. Absolutely. The interesting thing is that in his opening statement, Corzine basically says that he's waiving his right to self-incrimination. He could have refused to testify, but as a former senator, he felt it was his obligation to cooperate with Congress. So we'll see how he comes off. But uh, this is uh, this is good for the Republicans. Uh, this is potentially not very good for the Democrats. But also, you may have a situation where the public just decides, oh, these these Wall Street characters, uh, they're not any good, uh, regardless of party. So uh, well, this, this could play generally against Wall Street. Uh, right. Well, and, and I would just add that I'm not sure if it, you know, it, as you say, it, it plays more to the Republicans, but to the public itself, uh, it might seem like a big waste of, waste of time because, uh, you know, we know that MF Global is not systemically important to the economy. So what is the point of dragging him in front, in, in front, of, in front of the lawmakers then? We, what do you really want to get out of this that's going to serve the American well, th public? This adds, this adds to the narrative, and it also adds to the narrative, uh, putting Obama, one of his biggest bundlers, being Wall Street. This just adds to the political narrative going into this uh, next campaign. Also, there is a very significant cynicism on the part of the public, uh, and that cynicism extends directly to Wall Street. So I think Congress has a legitimate reason to ask some tough questions, reg and regardless of party. And I would hope that the Republicans wouldn't make this into just a partisan spectacle, but they actually try and shed, shed some light on what happened, yeah. because the public is very concerned about the stability of our financial financial system, and when a significant firm like this, headed by a high-profile person, goes under, uh, there's a role for Congress well, to play. Well, and, and I'll just also add, and this, I don't think you're going to have many Democratic defenders of Corzine either. I think you're going to see a piling on today. Well, I'm glad you say that, because Congressman Frost, I mean, do you think the Democratic lawmakers on this committee are going to be, you know, as tough as the Republican counterparts at all? Well, I don't know as tough, but I think they will want to be seen as constructive, trying to figure out what happened here, trying to make sure things like this don't occur in the uh, in the future. And I don't think anybody's going to go easy on Corzine simply because he was a former senator. Uh, but I do think the, the Democrats may come come at this from a slightly different view than the Republicans. They won't, they won't want this to be strictly a partisan witch hunt. They'll right. want to say, look, we need to find out what's going on here. We need to make sure that um, major companies like this can't cause problems for our economy. And this is a House hearing, not a Senate hearing. Uh, Corzine, whatever cachet he has is over on the Senate side. I don't think you're going to find it on the House. Yeah, he never served in the House. That's true. That's very true. Uh, Congressman, thank you so much. I really appreciate you joining me. Thank Congressman you. Thank you. Martin Frost. And